they came to us and said, how about making five short films that are filtered through the notion of only in Toronto. Having five very distinct directors bringing five very distinct opinions and views of the city together is a great way to celebrate everything that is Toronto. Tonight is a big night for five directors and everybody who helped them. Uh, we're here to watch five short films from uh, young Canadian directors and their take on Toronto. Takes on Toronto it was brought to us by our advertising agency, Enterprise Creative Advertising. Uh, they were aware that Toronto had a really rough year last year between a very cold winter and SARS and a blackout. It really affected the film industry and they came up with the notion of getting five young directors to create five short films. Their next thought was to include the Toronto Star. I just wanted to do a comedy. I wanted to make people laugh and my film is called Cynthia's Week. You're late again. Jeez, I, I just sat down. I mean, should we really begin the session by pointing out my faults? Do you think that's wise in my condition? You don't have a condition, Cynthia. When I wrote the script, it just became much easier for me as a writer when I put, you know, my, my voice and myself in the lead role. Suddenly the script just kind of happened. So did you meet anyone this week? Well, I thought I met somebody on Thursday, but I mean, that turned out to be a complete disaster. It was the third time this week it happened. Well, that's down from last week. We were trying to come up with a, a new campaign and way to reinvigorate the brand in the city. But at the same time, there was a convergence of all the awful things that were happening to Toronto. And uh, coming out of that at the end of last year, uh, there seemed to be this new optimism and hope in Toronto. The spot is about a young female photographer who sees something in the Toronto Star that compels her to begin a bike journey to her final destination where she takes a picture, only we never see what it is. wonderfully diverse city from ethnic diversity, architecture, everything about it. So the five short films really give us a chance to celebrate the positives of the city and the authentic realness of the city as well. I think one of the things it is is to try and create something that sort of exists outside the traditional confines of advertising. Um, bring the filmmakers in at an earlier stage and, and um, you know, ask them to provide ideas on what Toronto means to them and that sort of thing. So there's just sort of a, a, like a, a freeness and a liberalness, so to speak, to the, to the directive. Beyond that, I guess, what is the directive specifically with mine? It just sort of takes a look at three different families that live in three different apartments in two side-by-sides. Two families upstairs and one in a basement downstairs. Different ethnicities, uh, different socioeconomic backgrounds, that type of thing. And just how um, different they are, but how a commonality among them is the morning routine with the Toronto Star. Where's the people? I think I may have put it in the blue box. Today's pickup, you know. Are you 
kidding me? You mean you couldn't win it? Take it. You know, steal it? No, no. I just want to uh, ah! read it, then I'll return it back to you. Well, sorry, but I haven't read it myself. You're gonna read the sports? Yeah, I'm gonna read the sports. Why? You can judge the merits of a shoot based on how many of the crew come for drinks after, and they all came, so that means it went well. <clears throat> Penthouse? Mm-hmm. I forgot your name tag. It's called Room Service, and it's about, uh, I guess essentially it's a story of a reunion between a mother and a child, but we've uh, made a story so we're misleading the audience to think that the uh, motivation of our lead actress is for an entirely different purpose. She's sneaking into a hotel room and stealing diamonds for somebody who has kidnapped her child and holding him ransom. So it's a, it's a dark story about the uh, underbelly of crime in Toronto. Very nice. I'm impressed. We should get together more often. I'm not your type. My appreciation for the city has always been there. And I think uh, the privilege I had was being able to showcase it in a three minute film. The film follows this woman through five different situations where she's consistently missing this man in her life by a second or, uh, or by not making eye contact or by passing each other in the street and I mean the thing is it's definitely inspired by all of us having our heads down walking down the sidewalks in the city being too busy to notice all the all the magic that's around us and all the missed opportunities and all the people that we pass by I think this is a really excellent example that there, there is talent here. You know, we don't need to go elsewhere. Who knows what can happen from this, but I, I hope it really opens a lot of doors for all five of us. Bad. You're a bad actor. Like, good bad. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who ordered the Kung Fu chicken? Some messages and some creative just lends itself to animation. You can just do a lot more in animation and uh, you can get away with things when you animate them that you couldn't do in, in live action. animate anything so that's always uh, a fantastic option when you're talking to a client and they've got products that typically are not uh, uh, humans so so you can animate the product I always hearken back to the NFL on Fox campaign with the JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris that was stop motion. That was a really great, fun campaign to work on. It really, I think we captured the personalities of the, the guys. No. I got sweet, no. sweet, sweet, sweet I go to no. the oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Be still, boy. <laughs> Mommy. There's something about making an inanimate object come to life, making a little puppet, like, act like a little person. Come on, Bertie. You're gonna be late. I know. Be honest, Dave. Is she interested in me? Or does she just want me for my body? Don't know, mate. But you'll soon find out. I've had a lovely time, Bertie. <laughs> me too. Oh. Uh, oh. 
I'm so uh, sorry, Patrick. Oh, don't worry. The first question I always ask is, why is this animated? One is to bring something to life that wouldn't really ever have a life. And I mean, it doesn't have to have a face to, or arms and legs even, to elicit a feeling from it. Um, and the challenge of animation is to, to get that feeling from whatever that object. So that's one possibility. And then the other, I think, is to fool people to believe that something exists that actually doesn't. And people go, oh, you know, it's like, in seriousness, oh, well, how are the M&Ms to work with? You know, it's like, and then, and then, and then they step back and, wait a minute, this is, this is a little too, too much. But I mean, it's like, it's, it's as if they do have a life. Wake up call, 7 a.m. And how about our turn down service with a complimentary chocolate on your pillow? Um, great. Can I watch TV? No. Mm -hmm. Sorry. A lot of it's based on how good your voice talent is. Read my hips. So if you have crappy voice talent. Bad, you're a bad actor. And you don't have as much to animate to. And the more vocal range of a particular <laughs> voice talent you have, the bigger you can go with your animation. I can't believe nobody's tried to steal the Chuckle Fluffer 3000. Let's just deliver this thing, man. <laughs> Who ordered the Kung Fu chicken? Animators are actually, I think, are just um, shy actors and actresses. They wouldn't ever dream of like getting in front of the screen, but they bring their character and their, they bring it to this other thing. So it's kind of like, you know, they're standing off on the side and there's a little puppet over here that they're, that they're maneuvering and, and they're imbuing that puppet with, with their personality. Oh man, not again. Look, huh? Those damn rats! Yeah. Ah. People have said I'm a little too much um, like um, yellow in the M&Ms. So, you know, dumb and... and <laughs> situation right now switching from uh, what we've done in television to the feature animation business. And we're pretty much in a, in a new golden era of animation, feature animation. <laughs> Telling a story in 22 minutes is much easier than telling a story in 30 seconds or 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's probably the biggest difference is trying to adapt and how to change um, you know, your storytelling techniques. Our emphasis um, has always been on character and telling good stories. And I think if you've got a good story and you understand the nuances of character, then that carries through in all the work you do. Little laughter <laughs> and action, Michael. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. Too much. Well, we're here shooting the 2004 Cheers to Friends campaign. The campaign really is about um, Labatt Blue integrating with and raising a glass, we say, to, um, to friends and celebrating the moments that guys have with one another and the things they do to each other, with each other, uh, and when they're around together and integrating Labatt Blue into that moment. <laughs> A lot of it is the spontaneous things that happen among friends. Get a group of guys together and keep them in close quarters for six days and things are going to happen as a result of those guys being together that we could never have scripted. Yeah, 
Yeah, guys, I'm gonna hand out beers to you. They're they're not to drink, okay? There's no drinking in these scenarios. You can't drink on camera, okay? And besides that, it's not beer in there anyway. So, excellent. What we're about to shoot right now is a uh, is a birthday party, and everybody's giving him gifts, and he gets really emotional when he opens up a um, two four, which is basically a a Labatt blue bottle of beer. You send in a photograph, and this is a great idea, I just love this. You send in a photograph, and they will print an entire case of beer with that photograph. It's, it's the time that you taped me naked to the telephone pole on my beer. Now you can choose your favorite photo and visit labattblue.ca to order. That's one of the gifts the friends give them. And so he goes from this really spirited to a very touching, poignant moment where he almost starts crying. These are so not overproduced, glossy, heavily art-directed spots. Even now we've just set up a kitchen and it looks like a real kitchen. There's really no art direction, <clears throat> which means I knock off at about four o'clock. Um, but everything about it is real, and everything is um, captured on video. <laughs> the production value still stays very high, but at the same time, the, the handheld movements of the camera will give it a feeling of just that captured moment. Whoop it up, guys. Okay, good time. Good time. There, we go. there we go. And action. Hello, man. Ah, guys. She's nice. Open that one. We all chipped in, buddy. All right. From all of us to you. The strategy has predominantly been to really capture the honesty of friends getting together and like the crazy things that unfold when guys get together and drink beer. It's really about brotherhood, it's about friends. TV is too big an issue to tackle and it's not really the programming they care about, it's the commercials in between. A lot of the misleading about how to live um, a less consumptive lifestyle and stuff is right there. The Persuasion Equation Media TV Mind bomb started off with I was sitting switching uh, some satellite uplinks watching a social marketing class at the College of Public Health and it dawned on me that I should probably be using my abilities to uh, to pro instead of getting out on the streets and protesting what's going on um, it kind of just dawned on me that I should be using the skills that I have alert you are a greedy consuming slug Please shut down and have a real life. Use your brain and think for yourself. People are just don't have any idea how much Americans actually consume. So we thought about just doing a 180 degree spin on some of these commercials that were just absolutely annoying, like the Hummer commercial really galls me. We took the commercial and we ripped out the graphics and the voiceover and, uh, and, and threw in, you know, what we thought was actually a little bit more realistic. Normal TV, uh, 
I think is just misleading. It tells us everything about how to consume and it doesn't really have a context with our real life. It's not in context with what we do in our daily lives. There's just this enormous inequity between what we're told to do and what we can actually do. This one's a, directed right at the SUV culture. I remember an era a long time ago when I fought for the earth and the sea. But now I think my comfort comes first, and everyone knows it but me. I warm and pollute on my daily commute in my big four-wheel drive SUV. I lie when I claim that I really need it, and everyone knows it but me. I used to hike to a place in the mountains and dream of solutions to be. But now I've become a part of the problem, and everyone knows it but me. I spout on TV in a lying commercial and act like I'm hugging a tree. I give a rat's ass about the solutions, and everyone knows it but me. They're giving you the, the single occupant SUV commuter as, you know, uh, earth loving, photographer, sim super sensitive. And it was real easy to write that. I just reversed. It was a James Garner was reading the original one, and it was Nobody Knows It But Me. I go to a place in the mountains, and nobody knows it but me. You know, it's far, far away and over the hills, and nobody knows it but me. It was just such an easy reverse. It's a perfect example of the reverse spin. Plain old lies tonight. How are we of looking at things every day, every night, everywhere? This one skewers Boeing, our beloved Boeing. Um, and it's, uh, well, I'll just play it here first. This one here bugged me because uh, the, the original anger was because they got this super lovey-dovey feeling going about their freaking warplanes, you know? It, so immediately what hit me was they're trying to bring a loving feeling to war. They try to get you to make these connections like s s chewing gum equals sex. And it doesn't, you know? And the original graphic kind of went like, uh, uh, here she comes. You better let us do the talking. Big Red. She's on a dolly and they're dragging her along and she's trying to look like she's walking. And they had to do, and they're blowing the fan on her hair and everything. And it, it you know, with what I know about production, that bugged me too. I, I don't know why. I had to let that bug me. It looks good on you. That's a fun part about this is they, they do it to themselves, really. If you really just look into it, look past the message, you see that the whole thing is easily, easily undone. And they don't expect us to do this, but now, you know, t desktop video is here. And this is just the beginning, I think, of all kinds of great artwork that's going to happen. <laughs>